To passers-by, this building at the University of Bristol might not seem like anything special, but apparently it contains some of the quietest rooms in the world. Let's pop inside to find out a bit about the research that goes on here and how they manage to keep the place so peaceful and quiet. So these labs are deliberately built to be extremely low noise in all senses, so both uh, acoustic, vibrational, electromagnetic. We're on the basement because we're sitting on two metres thick of concrete which sits on the rock in order to uh, absorb uh, vibrations. This lab is special because we have a 25 ton concrete slab that allows us to, uh, we can lift off the rock with air jacks in order to de decouple from the environment because sometimes we're making the noise Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to absorb into the ground. Sometimes Bristol is making the noise <laughs> and we need to decouple from it. So it's almost like the whole lab itself is floating. It's, it's floating, off, it is, off, off, it off is. Yeah, that's right. We're stood on um, what we call the ground slab. This is mm. two metres of sort of cast reinforced concrete mm. on the bedrock here. It's sunk into the ground slab, if we can just look down here, yeah, um, it's this block. This surface here is separate to the, the, the ground slab. So we've got this large attached. ground slab. And you'll see it, I can put my foot on it, you'll probably just see it, the tape moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gives us on the surface here uh, a very, very, um, very, very quiet environment in which to carry out our microscopy and manipulation. So how, I mean, you say it's quiet, I mean, how quiet are we talking compared to mm. the outside world, compared to the street outside? There are standards by the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the US yeah. um, that have rated nanoscience buildings in terms of their vibrations and we made one level below the lowest for, for this building. Okay. So it is probably the quietest building in the world um, as verified by independent uh, measure assessors of this, this level of vibration. The NSQI was opened in 2009 at the University of Bristol and its doors are open to scientists from other institutions as well. Most research that goes on here in the nanoscience and quantum information fields, I caught up with some of the researchers who are based here for the long term. The Centre for Quantum Photonics is a research centre that spans the School of Physics and the Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering here at the University of Bristol. And we're in one of the laboratories which is in the nanoscience and quantum information building at Bristol. So in this, this particular experiment here, you'll see some optical fibres coming in on one side and, and leaving on the other. And essentially what's happening here is that single photons are travelling through these optical fibres, so single particle light of light come through these fibres, they get launched onto this silicon chip that you see in the middle, and then they get collected out the other side and head off to single, single photon detectors. Well, so, so the bigger picture is to develop a really powerful computing system based on quantum mechanics. I mean, what stage of um, that process are you at with this? I mean, is this the absolute fundamentals? Yeah, so that's certainly one of our ultimate ambitions is to realise a, a full-scale optical quantum computer, so a computer that would be exponentially faster at performing particular tasks than any, any conventional computer that we could make. Another type of instrument used here at the NSQI is the atomic force microscope. I met a couple of researchers who are working on a new version of AFM, capable of super fast imaging. Typically, an atomic force microscope, um, best way of thinking about it, one of the nicest analogies is that of a record player. Um, what you can see on the screen here is essentially the stylus, arm of the record player, and pointing into the screen is a very, very tiny, very sharp tip. And that's being drawn across the surface at the moment, and it, you build an image by just measuring how much the, uh, the cantilever goes up and down. We've built a high-speed microscope uh, and modif modified the existing kind of commercial one in order to do that. Um, and essentially it means putting in a, a sample stage which can move at very, very high frequencies uh, with a great deal of stability. Um, and then once you have that component, you're really just processing the data in, in, a, in a very, very fast PC. So the data from the AFM is fed through the processing system and then it's eventually displayed on this um, computer monitor. Uh, so I'm here with Oliver who's going to talk about what we're actually seeing. So these are uh, nickel nanoparticles on a, on a substrate. Um, in places you can also see kind of uh, true 2D salt crystal kind of holding them in place as well. So 
One of the main uses of the high speed AFM is not just to get the high frame rate, but we can use that high frame rate to actually stitch together multiple images so that we can image areas far greater than you can under a commercial kit. So here we can see some nanoparticles um, of nickel on a surface. Um, it's actually a 3D image just being displayed as a 2D surface. Um, so light is high and dark is low uh, on this scale, just to give you an, an idea of what it's actually showing. When you say that's, um, so it's raised off the surface, this light part, I mean, what, what yeah. kind of scale are we talking about? What kind of length scale? Uh, so this is maybe um, uh, maybe about 20 nanometers or, or maybe a bit more, maybe about 100 nanometers um, in height above the surface. Mm -hmm. um, this 2D salt crystal may only be a matter of a few tens of nanometers. So as well as all the science, there's also some interesting artwork in this building. For example, we have these radiators here, these twisting metallic pipes which resemble strands of DNA. And if you have a look on the wall over here, so we have these kind of funky neon tubes popping out of the wall which I've been told are uh, molecules of caffeine, so you've got all the oxygens and the carbons. Apparently the distribution of the windows obeys a Fibonacci sequence. Then if you look up to the ceiling, you've got this nice um, window dome which is in the shape of a buckyball. 